Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments, my name is Alan and today a short video in which I'll show you how to quickly configure a VPN server in the TP-Link Omata series of routers. This for the remote access to your network so your clients can connect to your internal services in a secure manner. Some few important considerations first. The most important is that I'm going to show you how to do this from the graphical user interface of the router and not from the Omata controller which I'll show you later in another video. Second is that as secure as this may be, always there are many considerations that play important roles in VPN connections. I'll leave you a reference link in the description that might enlighten you in the use of VPN encryption and protocols. Hands on our workshop today, we'll assume you already have the router up and running or you may want to watch our previous video for such task. That only may take a few minutes. Also, a public address is necessary, something that you can easily set up with your service provider, sometimes for a small monthly fee if you want a fixed IP. In case of a business connection, fixed IP is the standard. Once you're logged on to your router, you'll follow three simple steps. First, we're gonna create a VPN DHCP IP pool. These are the IP addresses assigned to remotely connected computers, so we have to check first our existing network so they will not overlap as that may create an important conflict. We'll go to Preferences, then select VPN IP Pool, click Add, name the IP pool and select Starting and Ending IP Addresses. That's step number one. Second, you'll create the VPN users that will authenticate remotely, so we'll go to the VPN tab go to users and create as many users as you need. You need to provide a secure password, then select the protocol they'll use and for the local server select the IP of your router. Choose an IP pool from the one you just created. DNS can also be the router. In network mode you select the one you are configuring right now, which in this case is client to LAN. You limit the number of connections that can be done with the same username and we're done with step number two. Third, and most important, create the VPN server itself, for which you'll go to choose the type of VPN connection that you're gonna create. Little advice if you're gonna connect from Windows computers and Android devices without further configuration for the clients, an L2TP server will work just fine, and security is above average. So we'll click Add, then select the WAN you're gonna use for such connections, remember that this router supports multiple WANs, choose the IPsec encryption, which we usually prefer to encrypt, and set a pre-shared key you'll have shared with clients attempting to connect. Don't forget to check Enabled. No need to configure L2TP clients as the server is the router itself, so the users that we specified in the Users tab will be able to connect. Finally, in the tunnel list, you'll be able to check the active remote successful VPN connections to your router. That's it. You're done. Now let's go to configure the clients. Also, a very simple task. First a Windows-based computer, then an Android device. I am currently connected to a 4G hotspot here, a common scenario for VPN client access. We then right-click the network connection and select Network and Internet Settings. Then we go to the VPN tab and select add a VPN connection. Windows, or built-in, is the default value. We then name the connection and provide the parameters we already configured in the server. In this tab, the public IP address of your router or the dynamic DNS name if you use such services. VPN type will be L2TP slash IPsec with pre-shared key. Be careful to type it correctly if you choose a complex key. Check twice. Type of sign-in info is username and password the ones we created in the server. We'll then save and attempt the connection. If we type correctly the passwords, it'll connect in a second. We can check the IP address handed to us by the server and we'll be able also to browse and connect to computers connected to the remote network. To replicate such connection in Android is as simple as it gets. We find the connections menu in settings, go to advanced, VPN, Add a new VPN and basically replicate the same info given in Windows. Just be very careful not to make this mistake. The PSK or pre-shared key is an IPsec pre-shared key. Username and password and you're done. Exactly as you did in Windows, you can choose any file browser to connect to any SMB shared over the virtual private network. We really hope this was a good introduction to remote connections. We'll have the same exercise and configuration done from the Omata network controller. Please remember that you support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. This was Alan from Technology Moments. See you next time.